Hello friends and family and welcome to the Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. Uh, friends and friends of friends and I'll reiterate that this is not meditation instruction. This is just a conversation about meditation. A friend came back to me about the video regarding doing the dishes. The idea that perhaps doing the dishes could become something else for us. And she was asking about this division between interesting work and non-interesting work, interesting activities and uninteresting activities. And um, she was wondering about this idea that perhaps doing the dishes could become exciting and that uh, one might perceive doing the dishes to be as enjoyable as reading a book. And um, I wanted to clarify that I pick on doing the dishes as an activity because doing the dishes is most of the time <laughs> not very exciting. Um, there is a certain aspect of being on autopilot when you're doing the dishes. You. Uh, you are certainly not giving the dishes your full attention by default. Um, in the same way that we probably don't give driving or riding a bicycle or swimming our full attention. There's some measure of autopilot there because we've done these activities so many times before. We know how, our body sort of knows how. And as a consequence, normally what we end up find our, finding ourselves doing while we're doing something like the dishes is that our mind wanders. And if our mind is wandering, um, our attention certainly isn't there on the dishes, the act of doing the dishes. And it might as well be somewhere else, somewhere closer, and that can be the breath. So while we are doing the dishes, we can bring our attention to the breath. And as a consequence, we'll actually find that we're paying more attention to what we're doing in front of us. Um, washing a knife, I should be a little bit careful right now, that sort of thing. Um, if we find ourselves excited while we're doing the dishes, it's usually because we're anticipating something. We're looking forward to getting back to the book that we were really enjoying. Uh, moments earlier. And that isn't the, the kind of feeling we'll generally have during these activities that we do in parallel with meditation. You can try to meditate anapan while you read a book, but when you read a book, your attention is drawn heavily into the book. Your, your mind may wander a little bit, but it's not going to really wander very far. Um, and to keep your attention both on the book and on the breath is, is a bit more difficult. So that's why I say, while you're sweeping the floor, while you're vacuuming the floor, while you're doing the dishes, these activities you can certainly do while uh, you have your attention on the breath. There is a certain reality to this, um, which I brought up in this conversation with my friend. Uh, which is that we are breathing and we are washing the dishes. And she responded to that by saying, oh, so I should observe that, uh, yes, I am breathing and I'm doing the dishes and I maybe I am annoyed that I have to do the dishes. And so I'm observing the fact that I am annoyed. And I would say, no. Um, if you notice that you are annoyed, because you're doing the dishes or you're bored by doing the dishes, that's fine. And you should accept that, accept, okay, I'm feeling annoyed right now. But then bring the attention back to the breath. The breath is your meditation object, not emotions and not whatever is arising in the mind. That's not the meditation object at all. And um, in general, I actually do not recommend trying to observe emotions. I realize that this is um, a common meditation instruction. I 
think that in many ways trying to observe emotions or trying to observe thoughts as a meditation instruction is perhaps to use an analogy it's a bit like asking you to pick up a guitar for the first time and start playing some metallica oh just do it just play this song um there is a lot that we need to do before we can get to a point where we can observe emotions or we can observe thoughts objectively uh, it's, a, it's extremely difficult um, and what i certainly find i end up doing when i'm observing thoughts observing thoughts or ob observing emotions is that i get wrapped up in that thing and i i roll it over and i roll it over and i play over this uh, this image or this idea or this feeling or this thought over and over again, so many versions of that thought or that emotion. And that's not meditation, that's obsession. And we should be clear about the distinction and that you are, in effect, meditating with those thoughts or meditating with those emotions if you meditate on the breath or the body, in the case of Vipassana, but Anapan is enough on its own to meditate with all mental phenomena that is coming up. You will certainly notice those things because you have to bring your attention back away from those things, back to the breath. And so it's not as though you are actively ignoring those things. You're not suppressing them. You're not pushing them away. Um, but I strongly recommend not making your thoughts and emotions your meditation object early on in your meditation career, when you find that you have a completely still mind, um, and that will happen uh, at some point um, for all of us, then we can meditate on thoughts, then we can meditate on emotions, because we can do so with a balanced mind, with a clear mind. But until then, for us beginners, it's better to meditate with a concrete meditation object like the breath. So while I wash the dishes, the meditation object is my breath. I'm aware I'm washing the dishes. Okay, good, I'm washing the dishes. I'm aware that I'm bored. I'm bored of washing these dishes. But when I feel bored, that's an emotion. I bring the attention back to the breath, back to the breath, back to the breath, gently and without a lot of strain because I don't want to make the dishes any more unpleasant than they might already be. And what I find is that it doesn't take long for breath meditation uh, during these very mundane activities um, to make them much more enjoyable um, and they become a, a much more meaningful part of my day. I hope that this helps you. For anyone uh, who happens to be a friend of a friend, I will put up the two links to the videos explaining how to install uh, Anapan instructions on your Android or iPhone, iOS phone um, at the end of this. I hope that uh, you give that a try. It's very straightforward instruction and it's uh, very easy to follow. I hope everyone is taking care of themselves and their family and their friends and their friends of friends if possible. I will talk to you all tomorrow. Goodbye.